This video illustrates the transitions of the hand function for this quadriplegic boy who started ABR at the age of three and a half. The initial picture you see it on the left. The sequences of visuals on the right demonstrate the way that this boy has changed over the two years of ABR. You can clearly see that he has developed the reach and range of movement at the shoulder. At the same time, he has developed the ability to have a full hand grip of a relatively large object, such as the ball in this example. And let's get into some details of what were the specifics of transformation and what milestones have been achieved along this way. First of all, it's obvious that pretty much any parent of a quadriplegic spastic child would name the development of the hand function as one of the key elements, one of the key achievements that they would want to see as the result of the rehabilitation efforts. However, it's difficult to achieve as most of you should know from experience. It's obvious pretty much every parent would prefer seeing this function that we are observing on the right to the fixed and fused position that we are seeing on the left before ABR. But unfortunately, very few parents understand the link between the two. And often the efforts focus in the wrong area. Let's identify three key domains of the arms and hands use. The top level, the third domain, would be the use of the hands for the function and purposeful movement. That's an obvious value, an obvious thing that most of the parents realize and want. But it's important to understand that the free motion, free purposeful movement of the arms have to be preceded by their proper role in the support function, the way that they contribute to the weight bearing, whether it's the direct weight bearing, ground reaction weight bearing, or whether it's the use of the arm for the suspended support, like in this case, the suspended support by the arm assists the sitting position. That's the second level of the arm usage. But what most of the people forget about is the base underlying level, the freedom of the movement of the arms the separate mobility from the other elements of the body, namely the head, the trunk, and so on. So from this perspective, let's look at the initial situation and understand what kind of challenges we have faced. First of all, this is position on the back, basic position. What are you seeing? Rigid arms. And another element that you're observing, I'm moving this boy by the pelvis, what you're observing, you're observing the entire trunk is being moved. But what is important for us from this perspective of this particular video is to follow the drag of the arms. The arms do not have this basic fundamental level. They don't have the independence of the mobility from the rest of the body. And now when this boy is actually trying to do some free motion, sort of this top level domain, what we're seeing, he can't deliver anything productive. He can't have the local movement of the arm. He doesn't have any range. So that's the key challenge. And you can see when we look at this assistant weight bearing rule of the arm, we don't see anything purposeful here, neither. He can't use it. And this is a great picture, which you've seen already in the other videos but it's still incredibly important. The movement of the head translates into the drag of the arms. The arms position is rigidly related to the rest of the movement of the body. And since the development starts from the head level, it's incredibly important to understand that this division, the separation of the head movement from the position and the movement of the arms is must have, absolutely must have, first step for any quadriplegic child, especially the spastic one. Because without this selective mobility of the arm, without that segmentation, it is impossible to expect the next stages. And that's where you can see that the arm is not usable for the suspended support. 
even if I try to support him by his strong right arm, you're seeing that doesn't help the sitting position. So the arm is not usable in that weight bearing role. And once again, I want you to understand this sequence. No segmentation, no weight bearing role, respectively, no reasonable expectations for free hand function. And of course, if you face this kind of situation where the head movement translates into this region W drag of the arms, obviously there is not much to expect from their function. On the right, you're seeing his hand function today. Minimal support by the weak left hand, which is being used for the weight bearing support. And then selective hand movement on the right side high lift the controlled release of the ball where he's actually then able to follow up with the controllable descent of the arm and even on the left side on the weaker one more distorted previously completely feasted one we can see that he is actively getting engaged into the active purposeful movement and once again i want to highlight this fact this active purposeful movement came after the weight bearing role of the arm not before after and of course when we look at the left at the situation before that's where we can see the dramatic challenges the arms are rigid they are being in this w position and whenever the upper body is being moved he moves like a single unit you see whether we are looking at him from his back or whether we are looking at him from his front, whether his head is being moved, whether his legs are being moved, whether his trunk is being moved, the arms are stuck in the same position. Again, a very simple logical question. How can one expect to achieve any progress of the hand function by training or by whatever signals if there is no basis for it, if there is no independence? That's question that I would repeat over and over and that's the fundamental premise that is behind the ABR method and once again what we're seeing on the right it's the hand function but the basis behind it is this release we are seeing that the head movement is free from the position of the shoulders and the arms are being positioned separately and adjusted separately look at this picture the arm could be moved behind and then has a room for movement without dragging the rest of the body. And now we're getting back to the past. You see a single block, no ability to transfer any weight on the arms as well. So both levels, neither the segmentation nor the weight bearing transfer are present there. And that's the key explanation. Without those fundamentals, any hand function is not to be expected. And vice versa, the opposite examples you're seeing on the right. ABR program, which focused on the improvement of the core fundamentals, such as the trunk strength, the shoulder girdle strength, the neck strength, and so on. This program has eventually brought the significant and dramatic improvement in the hand function. Whether this hand function refers to crawling or or whether this hand function refers to the purposeful hand movements. So that's the key lesson that I want you to get out of this comparison video. And I hope that you will be able to apply it to the keys of your own child and to understand more about it today. Being able to see beyond the simple or like primitive approach of training alone and would sort of start looking at the fundamentals and develop the understanding that without the fundamentals the functional progress is extremely limited and again we will be showing you the extra detailed videos with the several months intervals which will go into the details of explanations of how did that the remarkable achievement of transforming this severe quadriplegic boy from this pitiful condition to this advanced developmental stages has been worked through and developed. Thank you very much and please proceed to the next set of videos.